Thanks, Rob. Sorry. Ah, thank you very much. Um, OK, so actually, I slightly changed my title from Predict the Future with Maths to uh, Can You Predict the Future with Maths? Which is <laughs> much, much, much more uh, scientific. Um, OK, so I guess the first way, or the best way, rather, to uh, explore this question is via a live experiment. Um, so I've made a little prediction, um, which I've put in a sealed envelope, which we'll come to later. But first, I want us, uh, as a room, to try and generate uh, a series of 10 random numbers, if we can, and see if my prediction holds true. Um, but of course, humans, famously terrible at coming up with random numbers themselves. So what I've done is uh, got six uh, newspapers that we can collect the numbers from, basically all the national newspapers without pictures of naked women in them, um, <laughs> as they are. So if I could just hand these out. Um, incidentally, um, I did have to buy a copy of the Daily Mail for this experiment, so I feel quite dirty. Um, <laughs> I hope you appreciate what I've done, if I can just hand those up. Um, so if you wouldn't mind, those of you who have a newspaper, if you could please flick through to any page and pick a number that you find within the newspaper. So um, I want it to be like a counting number, so something like, uh, something like money or numbers of people. And because we want it to be totally random, don't pick a number that could be restricted, right? So nothing like percentages or dates or phone numbers, nothing like that. Uh, so if you could pick those numbers for me, and in the meantime, I'm going to try and get ten random numbers out of six papers. So, to add in, just in case you think I've memorised all six national newspapers um, this morning, could easily do. Um, <laughs> I want to add in a bit of extra stuff into the mix. So anyone here on Twitter? Uh, put your hands up if you're on Twitter, please. Uh, someone, oh, uh, you there? Do you, can you tell me your Twitter uh, name? Penguin Galaxy, good name. And do you know how many followers you have on Twitter? Uh, about 3,600. Oof. Check you out. Okay. All right, let's have that as our first number, 3,600. Um, okay. I, I fear that only the very popular people on Twitter are going to be putting their hands up for this. 3,600. Okay, somebody else on Twitter. Let's try and get four people on Twitter. Yes, please. Do you know how many followers you have? 241, thank you very much. Lovely stuff. 241, let's get two more. Uh, yes, please. Um, <laughs> You're showing off. Six and a half thousand. Boom, <laughs> now. Okay, one last one, if Hannah, we can. Hannah, we've got uh, Ada Lovelace. Oh, Ada uh, Lovelace, go fine. ahead. Ada Lovelace Day has oh, 4,812. 4, 4, 4, you are more popular than Ada Lovelace <laughs> Day. Yeah, that's, uh, that's quite something. Okay, let's go back to our newspapers, if we may. Do you have a number for me? Okay, perfect. And next? Uh, 55. Okay. What I will say is the live experiment is going really badly wrong. <laughs> what did you say? 55. 55. Can yeah, can you? <laughs> okay. And um, someone else, yes. 12,000. Okay, that is more like it. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I had there's one more there. 200. Okay. We might be all right. Um, and over here? 1,112. 1,112, and there was one more there. Um, 1,072. 1,072. Okay, sorry, uh, and it's like squashing. Okay, fine. Um, okay, all right, so uh, those are our numbers. Pretty randomly generated, I think we can all agree. Um, okay, right. Uh, now, time for my prediction then, which is contained in a sealed envelope over here. I believe you have the envelope for me. Thank you very much. Could you read what is inside the envelope? <laughs> as loud as you can, as well. At least five of the numbers will begin with one or two. <laughs> I think that deserves a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> OK. OK, so I, I reckon you've guessed that I'm not actually psychic. And um, what I was using here um, was something called Benford's Law. Um, and Benford's Law is a pattern that exists in real-life data, like the numbers that you see in newspapers, um, which says that actually numbers beginning with a 1 are much more prevalent uh, than any other numbers. In fact, you're six times more likely to find a number beginning with a 1 than you are a number beginning with a 9. And actually, the same is true for Twitter followers, even though uh, it didn't quite work out with our examples here. 
Um, empirically, the, the, the numbers slightly differ, but when you think of it in terms of Twitter followers, this pattern begins to make sense, right? Let's say it takes six months for you to double your number of Twitter followers. If you start off with 100, it will take you six months to get to 200, six months to get to 400, and six months to get to 800. But you'll spend a lot more time at the numbers that begin with a one or two than you will with the higher digits. Um, now, this was a distribution trick, so there was always a risk uh, that I would have got it wrong, which is why I planted um, another envelope <laughs> in the crowd. Thank you very much. Cheers, didn't need that. Um, <laughs> you can keep that one. Um, okay. But, um, but the important point here, though, is that there are patterns that sit behind everything that exists in, in the world, really, in our natural world and in our human world. And these are patterns which mathematics is uniquely placed to describe. And if you can understand these patterns, it means that you can exploit them and, OK, perhaps not predict the future, but you can certainly start to make some educated guesses about what's likely to happen. And these patterns are absolutely everywhere. So they're in, uh, you know, data in newspapers, they're in the way we form friendships, the way that traffic jams or transport happens, uh, even in the way that serial killers behave. But they're also in the way that we look at each other as men and women. So there's a really amazing new book that's just come out um, by the founders of OK Cupid, um, who are all mathematicians. Um, and on OkCupid, you can rate how attractive you think people are between one and five. Right? This is for heterosexual relationships. Um, in this example, there's lots of different examples in the book. So this is how men rate women on a scale of one to five. And actually, it's a pretty nice curve, right? It's got a nice bell shape. The middle's in about the right place. It's got nice tails on either side, which says, I think, something quite nice, despite all the unrealistic views of women that we're bombarded with, actually, men just fancy women, basically. That's what, <laughs> that's, that's what this guy tells us. Um, would you like to see the way that women rate guys? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> this curve is so extraordinary that basically women only think that one in every six guys is above average attractiveness. <laughs> But we will still go out with you, so it's fine. It's absolutely fine. Um, but OKCupid okay, are really good at finding this data, looking for these patterns, and, um, and in using it to try and predict which couples are most likely uh, to go well together. But it doesn't just happen... I mean, this, this story isn't just with things like dating. There are also much more serious um, examples which have a bigger impact on our lives. And so I wanted to finish with an example that's much closer to my own research. Um, and this is looking at the patterns and exploiting the patterns in burglaries. Um, OK, so, uh, I guess when it comes to burglaries, everybody is aware that there are some areas of a city which are much more prone to, be, uh, prone to crime than others, right? Um, so here on the left is an image of burglary hotspots um, in uh, Long Beach, California. But what you might not be aware of is that these hotspots don't just stay where they are. They move around in space and time, as you can see in this simulation on the left-hand side. And the reason for this is something called repeat victimization. So anyone who's been burgled may know of this. But essentially, if you get burgled, your chances of being burgled again within a short space of time increase massively, right? And the reason is that burglars get to know the layout of your house, they get to know where you keep your valuables, the locks on your doors, the escape routes, and so on and so on. But this effect isn't just for you, it's also for your neighbours uh, and your neighbours' neighbours, and so on and so on, all the way down the street. And this really picks out when you look at data. So here's um, some real data from burglaries in Merseyside um, by one of my colleagues, um, Shane Johnson. Um, the different lines are in different weeks, and as you go from left to right, it's the number of doors away from the original incident. And you can really see this effect of decay in space and in time going away. Now, this effect, this is repeat victimization, will continue to happen until people uh, increase their own security or until police notice that there's a, a hotspot forming and increase their presence in the area and, and, and act as a deterrent effect. But what's really interesting is this, this pattern here, repeat victimization, doesn't just only belong to burglaries, because you also find it when you look at earthquakes. And this does begin to make sense, right? You have an event that happens, and it means that subsequent events are suddenly much more likely. But the mathematics behind both of these examples is actually incredibly simple and really, really elegant and really describes well what's going on um, in, the, in the real world. So well, in fact, and it's so simple, in fact, that you could wrap it up into an iPad app 
and give that to police to use uh, when they're uh, going out, uh, kind of policing a, a city. And in fact, that's what this group of mathematicians, who, um, who I know and hate because they made so much money from it, um, <laughs> have done, have done in America. And this is a screenshot of their iPad app. So essentially, they've sold this, this piece of technology to so many different police forces across America, and uh, some in the UK as well, in Kent and in uh, Birmingham. I know they use this type of technology. So in a cop car, effectively, you'll have this iPad, and it will tell you based on squares on a map, where is most likely in the city to be uh, susceptible to burglaries at any given moment or any given evening. So all the cops have to do is uh, increase their presence in that area and it will dramatically reduce burglaries. And these effects are profound, right? So here is a graph. Uh, the top blue line is before they had this technology and the red line is once they had this technology. Um, and the group have managed to reduce burglaries in cities by up to 19% in some areas. So this is a really genuinely profound effect. So I guess that kind of brings uh, my point to a close. So maybe mathematics can't quite predict the future, but it can help us understand the world enough to make a little bit of a difference. Thank you very much. Hotmail, email, drop me a Gmail. My inbox is loaded, full to the hilt. Got a reply, I got internet guilt.